Here's a really interesting automated command that's not built in, but you can build it in for free. If you go to Russell Brown's website, russellbrown.com slash scripts.html, he has some panels that are available for both Photoshop CS5 and CS4. And this is the one we're going to talk about right here called the Adobe Watermark Panel. Along with the ability to download it here, there's also an instructional video, but you don't need to watch that because I'm going to show you how it works right here. So first of all, you have to download it, and it's an installer that happens automatically. Then in Photoshop, you'll find it by going to Extensions, and then you'll find the Adobe Watermark panel here. The beauty of this automated command is that it's very, very straightforward. Here's what I would suggest you do. First of all, let's open an image. that we're going to use to determine where things are going to go. So the first step is, and you just click through it, what image do you want to use as your source for the watermark? Could be an Illustrator file, could be a Photoshop document, could be a JPEG, or even a text entry where you just type in some text. I'm going to use a logo file. So here I have a couple of different ones. Let's just use this white logo. It's an Illustrator file, so I can't actually look at it right here, but that's okay. I know what it looks like, of course, but in this watermark panel, we'll be able to check it out and see. That's the first step, is choose the, the file you're going to use for your logo. Then in the second step, you decide what images you're going to work on. Now, what I would suggest is start off with one as an open image, because that will let you preview it and see then if you like it, you can uncheck that and select a whole folder full. Similar to batch processing, which we'll talk about later on, here you can choose a folder to say, where do I want the end result to go? And I would suggest choosing a different folder. So let's make a after folder with logo. And we'll choose that. Now the key part of this, and this is the most important part, is how do you know where to put it? Because one of the challenges with if you tried to record an action to do this, it's going to work different with tall and wide images. Here in the watermark panel, I can decide do I want it lower left, lower right, and so on. So I'm going to choose lower right. I'm not sure what to put in for these numbers, frankly. Maybe 50% opacity? I don't really know. And that's the beauty of this button right here, preview. So you run it, and it says, well, I'll show you what it's going to look like. There it is in the lower right. I kind of like that, but I think I want to offset it a little more and maybe make it just a little bit smaller. So then we just hit preview again. And that's, again, the beauty is you don't have to run the whole thing. You just kind of look at it and say, yeah, that's what I had in mind. But I think, finally, 40% looks the way that I will probably do the trick for me. There we go. Once I've done that, now I would come back, knowing it works on this one, I would come back and uncheck that, select a whole folder, and then have it run. Now this is an example of an add-on. It's a panel that pops up, but it's really taking advantage of an automated command where someone did some heavy-duty background work for us, so we have a wonderful built-in ability to add watermarks to all of our images.